Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning fundamentals and applications. Today I am going to discuss the concept of ensemble classifiers that is ensemble learning. If the performance of a classifier is not satisfactory then I can consider multiple different classifiers. These classifiers can be trained with the help of the original training data set or maybe these classifiers can be trained with the help of different training data sets. And after the training, the output of these classifiers can be combined by voting or averaging. And after the combination, the performance of the overall system may improve. And this is the fundamental concept of the ensemble classifier. Earlier I discussed the concept of bias and the variance. The problem is due to high bias and the high variance. And in this case, if I consider the ensemble classifiers, uh, the bias and the variance can be reduced. So, I can show later on how to reduce the bias and the variance with the help of the ensemble classifiers. And also, uh, there are three popular ensemble techniques. One is stacking, another one is begging and finally, the boosting. So, all these techniques I will be discussing in this class. So, let us begin this class, the concept of ensemble classifiers. So, here I have shown the one block diagram showing the concept of the ensemble classification. So, I have one input training data set and I have the models, the model 1, model 2. So, n number of models I am considering. And these models are trained with the help of this common training data set. And output of these models or the output of these classifiers are combined to get the uh, final output that is the ensemble output. So, this is the fundamental concept of the ensemble classifier. So, this is the ensemble classifier. So, I can give one example regarding this concept. Suppose the detection of actual mail or spam mail. So, you can see suppose I have the training data set x n and I can consider different classifiers like support vector machine I can consider maybe the decision tree also I can consider or maybe I can consider the k nearest neighbor classifier also I can consider and all these are trained with the help of the training data set and because I have two classes one is spam another one is not spam that is the classification of emails. So, I am getting the outputs, one is the spam and another one is the not spam. Or maybe output of the KNN is spam. So, I am getting this output and after this, this all these outputs I am combining So, in this combination, I can consider the concept of voting or averaging. So, I can apply the concept of voting or maybe I can apply the concept of averaging. And finally, I am getting the output. So, if I consider the concept of voting, then I will be getting the output that is the spam. So, that means all the outputs of the model 1, model 2, all the models are combined and I am getting the final output. So, this is the fundamental concept of the ensemble classifier. So, in this class, I will be explaining the most popular ensemble techniques. So, first I will be discussing the concept of stacking. Next, I will be discussing the concept of begging. And finally, I will be discussing the concept of boosting. So, these are very important ensemble learning techniques. So, these concepts I will be explaining now. So, move to the next slide. So, here I have shown the concept of stacking. So, in this case, you can see I have a training data set and I have a number of models, model 1, model 2 up to model n 
and all these models are trained with the help of this training data set, the common training data set. And output of these models uh, I am considering to train the second level model that is the final model and after the training I am getting the ensemble output. This model 1, model 2, model n these are first level learners and the, if you see the model the final model that I can consider as second level learner. second level learner or sometimes it is called the meta learner. And this model 1, model 2, uh, this all these models I can consider as first level learners, the first level learners. So, the output of all the models model 1, model 2 up to model n these I can consider as features to train the second level model that is the meta learner and after this I am getting the output that is the ensemble output. So, this is the fundamental concept of the stacking and in this case also I can give one example the problem is the same problem that is the mail detection, email detection, spam and the non spam. So, suppose I have the this the training data set and I am considering uh, the classifiers suppose the support vector machine decision tree and maybe we can consider the k nearest neighbor classifier. These are level 1 level 1 models and output of these models I am considering. So, output of this model is suppose spam non spam and spam. These are the outputs of the level 1 models. So, all these are combined here. So, these we are combining. So, we are getting we are having the level 2 model. So, level 2 model suppose I can consider maybe the decision tree. The input to the level 2 models are the, the outputs of the level 1 models. So, this I am getting the level 2 model and finally, from this model I can do the prediction and the prediction may be spam. So, this is the fundamental concept of the stacking. So, you can see I have level 1 models and also I have level 2 models. So, uh, this is the fundamental concept of stacking. Now, uh, let us discuss about the concept of begging. So, in this figure I have shown the concept of begging. So, this is begging. So, in this case I have a training data set and from this training data set I am getting number of training data sets like training set 1, training set 2, training set n. So, all these training sets I can obtain from the original training data set and in this case I am applying the principle of sampling with replacement. So, that concept I am explaining later on sampling with replacement that is the random sampling with replacement. So, after this what we can consider uh, this model 1, model 2 all these models I can consider. So, model number 1 is trained with the help of training data set 1. Model number 2 that is trained with the help of the training data set 2. Like this uh, the model number n that is trained with the help of the training data set n. And after this we are considering we are combining the outputs of all these models model 1, model 2, model n and I am combining 
and I am getting the output. So, maybe I can consider the voting or averaging principle to combine. So, this is the fundamental concept of the begging, but one thing it is important. So, how to get the training set 1, training set 2, all this training set I can obtain from the original training data set by the process of random sampling with replacement. So, that concept I will explain uh, after some slides. So, this is the concept of begging. And finally, I want to explain the concept of boosting. So, here I am showing the concept of boosting. This is also a very important ensemble learning technique. So, here you can see I have a training data set and I am considering all the models, model 1, model 2, model 3, all these are classifiers. So, model 1 is trained with the help of the training data set and this model 1 can classify the samples of the training data set and some of the samples will be misclassified. So, I am giving importance to the misclassified samples. That means, the samples which are misclassified by the model number 1, they are given maximum importance. And so, that is why I am getting the weighted sample 1. So, I am getting another training data set considering the weighted samples. Weighted sample means the samples which are misclassified are given maximum importance and these are weighted. So, the samples which are correctly classified I am not give, I am not giving the importance. So, I am getting the weighted sample 1 that is the training data set. This model number 2 it is trained with the help of the weighted sample 1 training data set and in this case also I cannot perfectly classify all the samples. There will be there will be some misclassifications. So, that is why uh, I have to weight the samples. All the misclassified samples are weighted based on the importance. So, that means I am giving the maximum importance to the misclassified samples. So, I am getting the weighted sample 2. And the model number 3 like the previous one, it is trained with the help of the weighted sample 2 training data set. And again in this case, there may be some misclassification. So, I have to give the importance to the misclassified samples. So, that is why I am getting the weighted sample 3 training data set. So, like this I have to train all the models. So, this model 1, model 2, model 3, these are actually called the weak classifiers or I can say these are weak learners. So, this model 1, model 2, this model 3, these are the weak learners. And the output of these weak learners are combined uh, to get a strong classifier or the strong learner. So, this is a strong classifier or I can say the learner. So, output of all these weak learners are combined in the strong classifier. So, these are the inputs to the classifier and these are combined and I am getting the ensemble output. So, this concept is used in the Adaboost algorithm. So, Adaboost, this algorithm I will be explaining in my next class. So, what is the meaning of Adaboost? Adaptive boosting. Okay. So, Adaptive boosting. So, the objective is to generate a strong classifier from the weak classifiers that is the objective of the boosting. So, in case of the begging, so I explain the concept of random sampling with replacement. So, that concept I am going to explain what is this principle. So, here I have shown the concept of sample random sampling with replacement. So, I have shown in a vase there are 10 balls 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and I am doing the sampling randomly I am doing the sampling. So, if you see in the figure first figure in unit number 1 I am uh, just drawing a ball from uh, from out of these 10 balls. So, first suppose the ball 5 is 
sample. So out of 10 balls, suppose I am drawing a particular ball and suppose the ball is 5, the number ball is 5. So what is the probability of obtaining the ball 5? Because I have 10 balls, so it is 1 divided by 10 that is 0 0.1. In unit number 2, you can see I am replacing the ball, the ball 5 is placed in the base again. And in the unit number 2, I am drawing the another, another ball that is randomly and the ball is suppose 7. So this is the random sampling. So in the second unit, if you see the unit number 2, I am drawing the ball 7. So if you see in unit number 3 in the figure 1, the ball 7 already I have drawn and that is replaced. If you see the ball 7 is replaced, that is placed in the base. I am drawing a ball randomly and suppose this ball is 10. So what is the probability in this case? The probability will be same, it is 1 by 10. Similarly in the unit number 4, I am again drawing the ball randomly and suppose the ball is 5 and what is the probability in this case also? The probability will be 1 divided by 10 because out of 10 balls I am selecting 1 randomly. So this is the concept of random sampling with replacement. So with this concept I am generating the training data set. So I have the original training data set and I am applying this concept to get the other training data sets. The second figure I have shown random sampling without replacement. So in this case first you see in unit number 1 I am drawing a ball randomly the ball is suppose 5. In unit number 2 how to get the unit number 2? In this case I have not replaced the ball 5. In case of the unit number 1 what is the probability of obtaining the ball 5? This is 1 by 10. But in case of the unit number 2 in the figure 2 what is the probability of getting the ball 7? This is 1 by 9 because now I have 9 balls. And in the unit number 3 that means how to get the unit number 3? I am drawing the ball number 10. But if you see I have not replaced the ball number 7. So now you can determine the probability. And similarly the unit 4 that is the, four, the fourth ball I can draw that is 1 I can draw and in this all these cases I am not doing the replacement that is the without replacement. So you can see the fundamental difference between these two techniques one is random sampling with replacement and another one is random sampling without replacement. So we are considering this concept the concept is random sampling with replacement. So I have suppose this samples so all these samples are available all these are samples. these are samples. So this is a single training data set. So that means it is a complete training data set, complete training set and this complete training set we employed in case of the stacking. The next is I am considering the random sampling with replacement. So the replacement concept already I have explained. So that I am getting the training data set and that is with the help of random sampling with replacement. So this is I am obtaining this is random sampling with replacement. So this concept we applied in case of the begging. Boot strap. Aggregation. The meaning of begging is boot strap aggregation. And finally, in the third figure, what I want I want to consider random sampling with replacement over weighted data. So I can write random sampling with 
with replacement over weighted data that means we are considering weighted samples so these are weighted samples so i am giving the importance to the misclassified samples the concept of weighted samples i have explained in case of the boosting so i am considering the weighted samples in this case also and this principle we have applied in case of the boosting so here you can see uh, i am showing the concept of stacking um, bagging and also the boosting and also i am explaining the concept of random sampling with replacement so now let us consider the concept of bagging so what is actually the bagging so bagging concept already i have explained now just i want to write the algorithm for bagging so bagging so the first step i can say take original data set d with n number of training examples after this i am creating m copies of this training data set so dm till day so m number of copies m is equal to 1 to m so how to create this one is dm tilde is generated from d from the original data set from d by sampling with replacement the second point is is data set that is the data set is dm tilde has the same number of examples as in the data set d so that is the original data set so is data set that is the dm tilde has the same number of examples as in the data set d after this after considering this we are considering the training of the models train models so what are the models h1 suppose h2 like this all these models i am trained i am doing the training using the training data sets d1 tilde d2 tilde dm tilde respectively after this we have to combine all these outputs 
so we can consider averaging so use an averaged so average model is h and we have m number of models just i am doing the averaging m is equal to 1 to m h m and that is the final model and this is the final model so this concept is useful the concept of bagging is useful for models with high variance so it is useful for models with high variance and also it can consider noisy data so you already i have discussed about the high variance if the variance is very high that means we are considering a very complex model and that is nothing but the overfitting so the overfitting can be reduced with this concept that is the bagging model that is the bagging ensemble model so this is the concept of the bagging so pictorially i can show the concept of bagging so this is the illustration so in this figure you can see i am considering the original data so this is the original data and in the middle we are considering three models so these three models are learned using three data sets uh, that is selected by considering the random sampling with replacement so you can see the d1 another one is d2 another one is d3 these are the training data sets and i am considering three models which are trained with the help of the training data set d1 d2 and d3 and after this you can see i am considering the average model so the final one is the average model so these models uh, in the middle row uh, three models are trained with the help of the training data set d1 d2 and d3 and after this the output of these models i am combining that means i am averaging and i am getting the final average model so that is the concept of the bagging so now let us discuss one important concept that is the random forest classifier and this is the concept is based on the bagging so this concept already i have explained in one of my classes and here you can see i have the training data set and from this training data set i am obtaining the training data set 1 training data set 2 training data set n so all this training data set i am obtaining after this i am considering the decision trees decision tree 1 decision tree 2 decision tree n so all these decision tree i am considering the decision tree 1 is trained with the help of the training data set 1 the decision tree 2 it is trained with the help of the training data set 2 like this we are considering and the output of all these decision trees are combined uh, maybe we can consider voting or averaging and after combination i can do the prediction so this is the fundamental concept of the random forest so we are considering number of decision trees and all these decision trees are trained with the help of the training data set 1 training data set 2 training data set n respectively and after the training i am considering the outputs of, of all decision trees and we can combine these outputs uh, by voting or averaging and finally i am getting the ensemble output and that is the prediction so this is the fundamental concept of the random forest so here also i have shown uh, the concept of the random forest i have three decision trees these decision trees are trained with the help of different training data sets so all these training data sets i am obtaining with the help of the principle the principle is random sampling with replacement so in this case uh, i can consider like this uh, this is a this is a ensemble classifier and we are considering all these decision trees so given 
a total of d number of features each decision tree uses root d randomly chosen features so since we are considering randomly selected features that means all these decision trees are uncorrelated so this point is very important i can repeat this sentence because we are considering randomly selected features because of this all these decision trees will be uncorrelated and all these decision trees have the same depth so these two points are better to write randomly chosen features make the decision trees dts uncorrelated and all the dts usually have the same depth and you can see here and each dt will split the training data set differently at the leaps and the prediction for a test sample uh, how to do the prediction we have to consider the voting or the averaging so corresponding to the first decision tree i can do the prediction the prediction is probability of y given x so that prediction i can obtain the p1 y given x i can determine from the first decision tree from the second decision tree i can determine again the probability of y given x that is the p2 y given x and similarly from the third decision tree i can also predict the uh, probability of y given x so this i can combine i can consider averaging or voting and if you see the structure of the decision trees they are not same they are different but the depth is same so if you see the structure of these decision trees because this is the root node this is the root node and you can see these are the leap node and these are the internal nodes internal nodes and this is the leap nodes so the structure of this uh, decision trees are quite different and this is the fundamental concept of the random forest so in this class i explain the concept of ensemble learning that is the ensemble classifiers and i explain the concept of three techniques one is stacking another one is bagging and finally the boosting and one important concept is random sampling with replacement so we can obtain different training data sets from the original data set with the principle the principle is random sampling with replacement and finally i explain the concept of random forest in my next class i will be explaining the concept of boosting and also the concept of the ada boost classifier so let me stop here today thank you